dual mounts. This thing looks like an aircraft carrier behind it. Whoa! <laughs> Guys, we already found some fish. That's a school of freaking crappies right there, I think. <laughs> As a lot of you guys know, I was lucky enough to win a boat thanks to you guys, let me tell you that. And one of the big things is I'm never going to own like a new boat, like a really fancy schmancy boat. So one of the things that I really wanted to do with it is like do some like crazy cool improvements on it. Like really tweak it out so it's sick. And one thing I've always wanted on my boat is double graphs. Now that we're in Alabama, I'm going to be fishing a lot of ledges, a lot of offshore stuff. And it is so helpful to have two graphs at your dash and then to have two graphs on the front. It's expensive. Don't get me wrong, but it's super helpful and it makes you a lot more efficient in, in finding fish and covering water. So, in order to do that with these new HDS lives, I needed to get new brackets for my boat. And that's what we got down right here from Bass Boat Technologies. So, what we're going to do is I looked online and literally, dude, there are no videos of how to install these things. I'm not super mechanical, so we'll see how this goes. But we have a front bracket right here. And then we also have the double bracket right there. And we're going to install these things, go through step by step, might make a few mistakes, might kind of have some bumps in the road. We're going to go through and install these Bass Boat Technologies graph brackets and mounts so I can get my new HGS Live graphs on the boat and we can kind of go start doing some of that offshore fishing. So stick with me, this should be interesting. So let me give you a quick look at the two mounts that I got. This is for the dash, this is the, du the double mount, it's really cool, it's got kind of like these vibrator controller things it's just super super duper sturdy this is going to go right up here on my dash it's a double bracket mount that's going to be interesting too because it's actually like a stacker mount one of the biggest reasons that i went with this bass boat technologies mount is like i got my new hgs nines and literally dude they they don't fit you can already see we got the process started they they, they don't fit right there and even with like a modified bracket, the, the bracket's too wide. And Bass Boat Technologies is one of the only companies that makes a bracket that, that mounts in there that, that'll actually accommodate two units or even just one unit in the middle because of the sizing change. So that was a huge selling factor for me. But also just these things are super sturdy. They look super cool. Kind of like aircraft it's gonna look like a cockpit once i get done with it but i want to get to the install um there's some basic tools that we need so i'm going to show them to you right there looks like a 5 16 bit um a 7 16 and a 13 millimeter wrench and then um some hole drives gotta follow the steps and we'll get this thing installed get our our new graph set up which i haven't even played with because i couldn't mount them on the boat i'm kind of getting checked up about this it's gonna be pretty sweet we actually need to take these guys and loosen them and then we actually need to take these two screws out what that's going to do you can see there's a spacer bracket right here we want this back plate because this back plate kind of starts our process with, with mounting and setting up and setting in this actual um this actual bracket mount so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to loosen these guys up and one of the most important things that it did mention in the instructions is you don't want to completely remove the bottom two screws you just want to loosen them up so you can get that, that rear plate off of there. So one of the next steps I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen up the shroud because I think what I actually have to do is slide that bracket under there. So I already took the windshield off. Pretty simple. All I had to do with mine is to pop those things out and it pops right out. It's just like a, it's a little kind of a drop in screw. We're just going to go and loosen this up. Always keep in mind when you're ever you're playing with the shroud, be extra careful because it is very delicate. And um, just take your time. If you take your time, nothing goes wrong. All right, so you guys are right behind me. What we did is we have the back plate. And what we need to do, make sure it's right side up. So this is where our wires are going to go through. This is where we would have our gauges go through. We're going to go ahead and we're going to pop that thing on there. And now immediately you guys will notice that we need to expand these holes. So we're going to have to do some hole saws so we can get our actual wires for our units through there. But what I'm going to do even before we do that is we need to mark these four corners. And that's where our brackets are going to sandwich to create that kind of like that strength, that, that pressure strength, I guess you'd call it, that's actually going to hold this entire bracket and this entire setup up. So one thing I like to do is I just grab like a small drill bit that I can fit through these holes right here. And I'm going to mark them just like that. And then when I lift this thing off, I'll see my marks. 
and I can just go ahead and drill them. I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to mark where I want to do the hole saw so that I can go ahead and get my wires through there. Let's get to it. Now you see what we did there? Now, because we did the hole saw, we have nice mounts for the electronics. You can bring your cords right through there. We still have to drill these four corners, however. This is probably overkill, but I did get, you need a five, um, was it a five sixteenths drill bit to, to drill for these 10 30 second screws. And honestly, I could probably just use the standard bit. I don't want my drill anywhere near this shroud because bad things tend to happen. So I bought an extended bit. It'll come in handy for some other applications, but what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to stay very far away and make these holes in a clean, not injurious fashion to my shroud. All right. Well, what we did is we removed the gauges. I got them right here. And what we're going to end up doing is we're going to go ahead and we're going to put those gauges into the bottom bracket of the, of the best what technology's double mount. But what we need to do before that is what you can see here is we had these little kind of like fancy little bracket mounts right on here. And what we needed to do is we needed to pull those off. And the, the mount actually comes with basically they're, they're like filler circles. All you do is you go ahead and you pop it right in there. Just like that. All right, guys, we're kind of reaching the final steps here. And this is the part that I actually really didn't understand from the directions. So basically what we're going to do, if you can see, this is the shroud. What I didn't understand is how it gets sandwiched. So this bracket right here, this rear bracket, we're actually going to slide it under this shroud and it's going to sandwich in right here with the front plate. So you lift this shroud, slide it in, and then we're going to screw it together and it's going to kind of it's going to vise together and that's how everything gets held in. Now the trick with this is though, you got to run the wires through that rear bracket, that rear panel and then through the front panel and that's why we took out the little gaskets. We took out these rubber gaskets right at the beginning and it basically it gives you a little more just wiggle room to get those wires through. But this ends up clamping together and sandwiching together and that's how you get that tight bracket mount. But this is going to be kind of the trickiest. They recommend doing it with two people. I'm all alone so I'm going to run this solo, solo but I'm going to take my time, make it work right. We're going to sandwich this plate in and let's get things together. I'm sliding the shroud in very delicately here and I'm going to kind of work it on in to get it right behind that shroud right here. And you just want to take your time. It, it is a little bit tight, but once you get it there, she's just going to pop right in. And you have to kind of accommodate your wires because they're all sticking out, kind of like what we have here. We're going to have to back a few of these out to get it to work. So you can see that plate is in there. I slid it under the shroud. I'm going to have to run my wires through my holes. Now these are my two wire holes. Then I'm going to have to run the wires for my speedometer and my RPM gauges through here. But that's our rear sandwich. It's wedged in there. Now we can kind of move forward with getting the wires sorted out and getting that front plate sandwiched on there. One quick tip that you don't want to forget when you're doing this. So I've never had two units. So you need to think about as you're doing it, hey, what do I need to actually run two units? Well, one of the things you need is two power cables. So we installed another power cable a while back. So I have the two power cables. But the other thing is, and I think this is across any kind of unit that you're using, since all these units are on a network, you definitely need a network cable because you want to network the two units together so they can communicate. So the last wire that we're going to run through here so that they're, they're connected, it really doesn't run to anything else. It just runs between the two units is we're going to take this ethernet cable and we're going to kind of thread it back behind there. So we don't have any dangling cables, but at the same time, we can still network our units together. So we're sharing waypoints, sharing maps, sharing data, sharing where all the fish are. You, you get the idea. All right, guys, I think my layout's pretty tight. I do want to explain one thing. So I, I pull my wires out. I'm, Maybe not always, but especially when I go back to Florida, I really have no need for two units on here. And I'm all about being simplified and kind of streamlined. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of like weigh the wires in one direction so that if I'm only running one unit, I want to make sure I have all the plugs because I, I still want to have structure scan. I still want to have, you know, my network cable and things like that. So I've weighted all my cables to one side because when I'm only running one unit, I want it to be this guy right here because that's kind of how I look in that direction. If you're more of like a left-hand guy and you want it over here, 
I'd weigh your cables to that side. But what this setup allows me to do is, if I'm only running that one unit, I have all my data from my transducers and from my network going to that unit, I don't have to worry about always having two units set up and plugged in so that everything works right. So that's why you're seeing a lot more cables on this side. So the step we're gonna take now is we are gonna go ahead and get that front sandwich part. We're gonna go ahead and thread the cables through, get it laid in there, and then we're gonna screw it down and see how she looks. All right, so we are going to gently just set this thing right here for now. I'm going to stick my speedometer on there. Just like that. They're all set up. And then I'm going to run the cables out just as I did from the back so that they're all coming through and they're all ready to work and give me the data that I need once I get my unit set up. All right, so remember these screws as the ones we initially took out when we actually separated the front panel from the back panel. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put those back in. Now it says in the instructions very clearly be careful not to cross thread. And I am the king of cross threading and screwing things up. So I'm gonna take my time. I got my screw gun, which I'm gonna use at the end. But at first, I'm just gonna take this Phillips head. I'm gonna thread these screws into our four corner points and kind of get them started very gently and sort of, sort of gradually tighten them down. Take my time, don't wanna cross thread, but I'm gonna kind of get things snug before I actually crank things down, which is always a good decision no matter what you're working on. You guys can see it, I got my screws in, I got everything. I left it just a hair loose because what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna install, reinstall the windshield and reinstall the shroud and I wanna tighten it down and I want a little bit of play in order that I can kind of adjust the shroud and, and get it stuck back in the screw holes that were there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do that and then um, we're gonna get some brackets on here and get this thing up and running. I like to do the lower windshield portion first. It just seems like it makes it a little bit easier as you're, as you're going about it because you can kind of dance the rest of them into their slots. But we're going to get the graphs on here. I want to get started on the front so I'm ready to fish tomorrow. But she's pretty sweet. Super solid. I'd say it was about a two hour install time. If you had somebody with you, it's going to take a lot less time because there is some jostling at the end in order to um, get the thing seated after you slide that back plate behind the shroud. But dude, if that doesn't look freaking cool, I, I don't know what does. And literally it is the only way for me to get those those new 12s, those HTS Live 12s on here. I you know, I went big, I went for the double, but if I wanted just one on here, this bracket is literally the only thing on the market to get them on there right now. So just like with the other plate, the first step is I need to dismantle what I had. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take out these four screws and get this thing off and then kind of line up. This is the front bracket. It's a stacking bracket. What that means is basically one graph goes here, one graph goes here, and they stack on top of each other. They're just kind of succinct like that, which will be really cool because usually I have to look right left when I'm comparing what I'm seeing on one graph versus the other. This way I can look at one, sort of one direction, you know, like the band and I can see exactly what's happening and cross-reference against the two graphs because literally that's why I have the two graphs on the front. So the dash mount was a little bit complex. I give it like a rating out of 10. So 10 being the most complex, it was about a six or a seven. I'm not super mechanically inclined. This one on the other hand is really straightforward. Really all you're gonna do is machine screw down the four corners, you gotta run your wires through, and then you have to put the gimbals on for the brackets for the, for the actual graphs themselves. Um, same situation here though, we're just gonna pull out this rubber grommet real fast and uh, we're gonna thread these wires on through. I have quite a few of them, so it's gonna take a minute to kind of get everything situated, but that's really the first step whenever you're doing this kind of stuff is threading these wires through, getting everything through so it's ready to go, and then you gotta reorganize and re-zip tie once you're done. So that was really freaking simple. So that thing is rock solid, and then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cap my screws just like that makes it look very streamlined, very smooth. And like I said, it protects the hardware as well. So the biggest thing that we have left to do, so many wires. We have a lot of zip tying to do. That, that's always important because zip ties could change the world. In my opinion, duct tape and zip ties will solve any problem that the world faces other than hunger. But that's a personal and philosophical opinion. In this case, we got to zip tie, zip tie a bunch of wires together to kind of streamline things to make it organized. Um, that way you don't have wires hanging out 
hooks catch them, all kinds of stuff. So we're gonna do that, and then the last thing is we gotta get the brackets on here. So what I'm gonna do here is it's all nice and loose. So in order to make sure that stopper is set up in the right place, that vibration controller right there, I left everything loose and I'm actually gonna put a unit on and I'm gonna do this with each bracket that I mount so that I'm, I'm mounting it in the correct place because I don't wanna have to reset this all the time. Once it's locked down, I'm done with it. So I think you guys can see this is the stopper right here. I haven't tightened things down, but you see how it rests directly against that, that unit? That's what you're looking for. So I'm gonna tighten it down based on on where it's kind of like resting against that unit. And then I'm gonna put it, like tighten everything down, see how it sets and then put it back on. Both of these are rested on the stopper. What that's gonna do is it's gonna reduce all that vibration. You know, when you're kind of like idling around like five and a half, six miles an hour and that grass going brrrr, gone. I really like the finished product. Check these things out. This is the front. This is that dual stack mount. I get an HCS. Um, this is a carbon 12 right here. You can see how it lines up and then I have my seven. Let me show you the view that I like. So I'm going to be on the trolley like this. My whole deal is I have down scan on here and then I have the 2D on here. So I cross reference this against this, especially when I'm vertical fishing, you know, whether it's spotted bass or brush piles or just like a school of bass. This is going to allow me to like really see what's right below me and, and cross-reference quick. Instead of looking, I used to have to look right all the time. And dude, these things are freaking solid. Super solid. You wanna see the cockpit? Yeah, you do. Welcome to the, the new space of Mikey Balls and Living. This is where I watch all my movies, review and edit bit, not quite. This is a lifesaver, dude. These things did not fit and we decided to go big pimping with it. Dual mounts, this thing looks like an aircraft carrier behind it. We locked everything down. Let me give you the kind of my first person view right here. Super freaking, dude, it's just, it's super solid. It's exactly what I wanted. And dude, I'm gonna be fishing. We're going into kind of deep water season in a, in a month or two here. And it's gonna be perfect for kind of cross-referencing or I can run side scan, side scan all the way across or one big mat. There's so many different options. The other thing that I like too is, I always liked on my old boat when I had my graph kind of drifted over to the right, a lot of situations, I'm only gonna be running one graph at the dash because I'm not gonna waste my battery and waste my time setting up another. Well, if I remove this guy right here, I have this one right to the right. It has all my wires connected to it. So I have all my electro, like all my networking, all my transducers, everything goes to it. I'm good to go, dude. I'm like ready to rock and roll. I don't need two graphs on it like at one time. I can. I don't need it though. I hope you guys enjoyed these instructions though. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Hit up Mikey Balls Fishing, dude. There's a million freaking fishing videos, install videos, tweak videos, me being in any videos. There's, there's all kinds of videos. But I hope you like this rig. If you got any questions, I know we kind of blazed through it and I tried to be somewhat general but show you the process. If you have any question on how to install this Bass Boat Technologies, either the dual mount or the stacker mount that's up front, dude, hit me up in the comics box or you can find me on Instagram or on Facebook. Hit me up. I'm happy to help. Like I said, I'm not super mechanically inclined, so the fact that this thing is mounted just shows that, that anybody can do it because I am not Mr. Tools. Thank you guys for hanging out with me, though. I need to clean up. I've obviously made a mess. And also, I got these new HGS-12 lives all set up. But I don't have my waypoints on them. I don't have my chips on them. I haven't gone through the setup. Pro I got a lot of work to do yet. But that has nothing to do with the mount, so I'm not going to bore you with that stuff. We're going to get this thing cleaned up. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you next time. Hopefully catching fish instead of sitting under the carport mountain stuff. But this is pretty cool. It's probably going to catch us more fish. So until then, tight lines. We are out.